everybody. Thanks for joining me here for Quick Tip Thursday. Today's topic is Denoise versus Adjusts Noise Tool. One of the most common questions we have here is the question of why do I need Topaz Denoise if I have a noise adjustment tool in Topaz Adjust? Um, you know, don't they work the same? What's the difference? There's actually a lot of difference between the two, mainly the power of control that you have over noise reduction within Topaz Denoise. Within Topaz Adjust's tool, you only have two sliders and then a checkbox. But each one offers tools for its own type of noise or noise-like artifacts. So we're going to be talking about today those two noise tools, which one is best used for which situation. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. So let's actually start off in Adjust to show you kind of what Adjust does. We will go into this image here. Obviously, as we look at this image, I'm going into 100%. That's the best way to look at your noise, or even more so. There's almost no noise here. Within the gradient of a sky, you will start to see a little bit of noise if your settings aren't completely correct. But there's almost no noise whatsoever. This is at 100%. To me, there would be no reason whatsoever to take this into Topaz Denoise, because any sort of noise that I might find or create even within Topaz Adjust, I would be able to resolve it within Topaz Adjust. So let's go ahead and jump on into Adjust. This is be, this would be a, an image that I would take into Adjust. It just seems like it needs a little bit of a pop. So let's go ahead and try that out. I am in Photoshop CS5 right now, but you can access our plugins through Photoshop, Photoshop Elements, um, Photo Paint Shop Pro, Lightroom Aperture iPhoto, Photo Effects Lab, lots of other programs. You can check that out online. All right, so if I just wanted to give my image a little bit of a pop, I might start off with the Vibrant Collection. And let me reset all first here. I'm a big fan. If I want a lot of detail, I'm a big fan of Clarity. Clarity is actually quite nice. I'm just coming over to my preset and pushing that. And then I can come into my global adjustments, my color, maybe boost up my saturation boost for all of these mild colors that are in here. There we go. Maybe a little overall saturation, but not much. All right, here's before, here's after. Looks pretty good from here, except we have some halos that we would take care of in the adaptive adjustments, maybe even in the details. Let's process details independently. Here's before, here's after. Now if I go in one-to-one, -one, though, I'm going to start noticing probably in my sky area that there is some significant noise-like artifacts starting to show up. Here's before, everything looks pretty good as a gradient, and here's after. Now these, this gradient kind of as it jumps up, and you'll see these little artifacts here on your screen. Let me go in even further so maybe you can see that a little bit better. It's kind of hard to see. These are the kind of artifacts I'm talking about. It was actually there without all of the adjustments. It's just not as, um, it's just not really noticeable. So really what Adjust does is make that, um, make those noise-like features noticeable in that gradient, and that's what you want to avoid. You don't like to have harsh skies, especially if you have a nice blue sky like this. So I'm going to go back to 1 to 1, which is 100%. And actually make this a little bit more strong of an effect so you can really see the effect of the noise reduction. So let's say I wanted my detail boost up to about, now you really start to see these noise uh, like artifacts within the sky. So let's go to the, the noise tool. With this, I would say you're still able to deal with this within Topaz Adjust. You don't need to go into Topaz Denoise. When you open up the no noise tool here, majority of the time there is are no noise suppression happening within the preset, unless you um, have some presets that are making it go really flat, more illustrative. But you have your suppression slider and then the amount. The suppression is basically how much to suppress the noise. As you take this up, you'll start to see that your noise will start to, or the noise like artifacts will start to smooth out, not necessarily disappear altogether, but just smooth everything out. The problem with that is that it starts to become quite flat as well, especially you can see that going on in the clouds. You can take that amount down, and that's going to help to bring back some of the detail. 
here's before and after and you get a good noise reduction tool here if you go to uh, let's go to some other parts of our image let's take that noise on and off here's on you'll see it really well here up here in the horizon now I'm going to turn it back on so pretty good but it still flattens everything out quite a bit if we take that amount back up a little you'll really start to see that and I'm going to go back up in our sky again and this time I'm going to take the suppression down and I'm going to go to the use topaz denoise checkbox this uses the topaz denoise algorithm it just uses the overall noise algorithm though it does not go into any more control than that and what that algorithm has over the one that's the regular noise types of suppression is it keeps the detail Topaz Denoise is really well known for preserving detail even as it takes out the noise. So you'll notice as I take my suppression up this time, it's kind of hard to notice it actually, but I can turn it on and off. So even as I get up to a nice clean sky, I still have believable clouds here now. It's not so flat that it becomes illustrative. It is quite flat, so I would, might brush that out just a little bit. But now I have this nice smooth sky. If I take my used topaz denoise off, you'll see that that same settings will make everything much more flat. So the using topaz denoise is something I do recommend if you're actually trying to get rid of, uh, of noise. It's not those noise like artifacts. If you just have a little bit of noise, it's a great tool to have and um, that checkbox is going to be valuable. The reason that it's not by default always turned on is because it does take a little bit more processing power and you don't need it a lot of the time. A lot of the time you're just trying to suppress some of these artifacts that come along with the heavier adjustments that you can apply within the adaptive exposure and details. So that suppression should be good enough, the default one. Using Topaz Denoise is really good when you're actually working with noise. Let's cancel out here and quickly go into a really noisy image. This is one of my favorite noise images to work with just because it's so out of control with the noise. If you go into 100%, you'll see just really um, how massively noisy it really is. You have all sorts of noise, banding noise, a ridiculous amount of color noise, and a ton of contrast noise. The contrast noise is really the noise that looks like dots. The color noise are the splotches of color, obviously. The banding noise are the lines that are going across. Now, if I took this into Topaz Adjust and tried to work with our noise suppression tool, this is, I'm going to just, show you really quickly not really going to work out for us if I just go into my global adjustments I'm not going to do any let me reset everything oops reset all just going to go into my noise and I'm just going to try to take up the default suppression tool as I take that up you'll notice that it starts to take out that contrast noise the dots it does that pretty well but then you'll see that all these splotches of color they really haven't been taken out even as I play with my amount and the banding noise which has been softened significantly is still there you still see the lines going across the image so when you're dealing with really heavy noise even if you go to topaz denoise it'll help a little bit right now it'll bring back in some of the sharpness but you cannot get a good result with this high amount of noise. You'll see in the green we still have all the splotches of color, uh, lots of color casts going on and the banding noise is still there. So with the high extreme amounts of noise, Topaz Denoise is not going to work for you. If you're shooting low lights or shooting low light, if you're a night shooter, if you find that sometimes you do have high amounts of noise, Topaz Denoise is definitely the way to go for those high ISO types of shoots. So Denoise on the other hand is specifically made for noise. So these heavier amounts of noise are going to be much easier to handle for denoise. This overall strength slider is the only type of algorithm that is put into Topaz Adjust into that little checkbox. So as you take this overall strength up, you'll start to see you get similar results. 
but you don't get all of that color to go away. You don't get to play around with your shadow and highlight noise specifically like you do or um, like you do here. So really quickly, let me just show you. We have several different preview modes to help you actually look at just the contrast noise. So this is the contrast noise currently. And I'm just going to take my shadow noise out. My, I'm going to do this really quickly and try to get it to a point where you can see that you can actually save this image. <laughs> when I come down to my red slider, I'll go into my red mode. Again, Topaz Z Noise just gives you control over every single type of noise that you have, whether it's the red noise, the blue noise, the red channel or blue channel, it will help me there whether it's the large types of color splotches or smaller types of color splotches, I can, does not really matter. You have all different types of preview modes that are going to show you exactly where you need to be within each one. So even here, we haven't even gone back into detail recovery and we haven't done any tweaking at this point. We've already gotten a lot better. We're not in, we don't have all these splotches in the leaves. Here's before, here's after. Stay up here. Here's before, here's after. I was not going to be able to get this type of result in Topaz Adjust. It's just not possible. So if I wanted to work on this a little more, I definitely would. I would also go into my detail recovery and work with that to actually pull back the detail. There we go. Add some additional grain in there. And say OK. This is just a really quick one. Again, Topaz Denoise does have a little bit more processing power behind it, so for larger images, it does take a few seconds for it to process, but it's worth it if you shoot in high ISO, low light settings, and that's really what Topaz Denoise is ideal for. Adjust, again, is ideal for noise that's created within adjust or very, very, very slight image noise. So very quickly, I was able to go from an image that looks like this with all of this crazy noise going through it to an actual usable image that I might be able to actually use and do something with versus the other one which I wouldn't be able to. I hope that gives you some insight into the difference between the two tools. I will answer some questions. Richard asked, so is contrast noise monochromatic? Uh, yes, contrast noise is monochromatic, but it's, it's the kind of the dots that you see everywhere. The colors are not actually the dots. The colors are these splotches that are underneath all of these dots that you're seeing. Let's go ahead and go in on it. And that's why when you are in Topaz Denoise, we actually show you the contrast noise specifically in the Luma channel, which is a grayscale channel. So you can just concentrate on the contrast noise versus the actual color noise. Uh, Richard says, I know you go into red-blue preview mode when working with the adjust color red or blue, but when should you go into the luma or color modes? The luma is when you're working with just the contrast noise. Let me go back in there when we're looking at this noisy image here. And we'll reset all back to our noisiness. I'll go one-to-one -one so you can see a little bit more. And here's the Luma. Again, it's going to be a grayscale type of um, channel. It's only going to show you the contrast noise, kind of take out the distraction of the color noise. And you can turn that broad auto brightness up a little bit to normal or strong to really see that noise. And when you're in the Luma channel, you will work with the top three sliders, the overall strength, the shadow, and the highlight. And then when you're in your color channel, you'll work with the clean color slider. So the only time you'll work in the color mode is the clean color slider. And that's really just to make everything start to blend together quite a bit. It's not going to really work because we haven't done our red, blue, over, overall strength or anything. We do suggest that you go from top to bottom within this noise reduction tab because it is in order and it does help you step by step by step. Peter says the selections on the left of the screen for different raw files, etc., are just presets for the variable sliders. Yes. So as you 
go, let's say, raw light. Let me actually get back into the RGB mode and turn the brightness off. You'll see that all of these have their own settings for that. And I guess I go to light, it's going to change. Over here on the right, it was strong, they change, so they, they'll continue to change. And presets are a great uh, way to start off with. For this particular image, I might start off with this raw strong. If I don't, because that actually looks pretty good, and then come over and tweak it just quite a bit, um, really get everything looking correct. But presets are a great place to start. Uh, Henry says, if my image is JPEG, if I select raw presets, to de should I select raw presets to denoise, or should I use the JPEG presets only for the JPEG image? Really, it just depends on what looks best. I've used a raw preset before on a JPEG image, and I've used a JPEG image on an image that came from a raw file in the same workflow. So it really just depends on what looks best. My personal preference, you don't see it here, but on my personal computer, I have a list of personalized presets that are specific to some of my camera settings that I have when I'm shooting in low light situations without a tripod or even with a tripod and I'm shooting in a low light situation with a longer shutter speed. So I have all of those settings for certain presets for certain cameras. And the great thing is, is if you have the same camera at the same ISO, at the same shutter speed and the same aperture, and it's the exact same camera, the same sensor, it's going to always produce the same uh, digital noise. Even though you might not see it, it's still producing it. And so in a situation like this, you can definitely see it much more in a low light situation. I had the ISO at 25,600. So because of those settings, you're, mu you're able to see it much more. And when it, you can see it like this, it's always going to be seen like this at those settings. So you can just apply it and it's quick as that. And you can do a batch process through Photoshop or whatever you need to and always use that same preset. So that's what I suggest if you are going to get really into using denoise and you are a night shooter and somebody who really enjoys shooting in low light and needs to quickly get rid of digital noise, those presets are really great to have. All right, everybody, thanks for joining me for a quick tip Thursday. Thanks again, and we'll be talking to you later. Have a good evening or morning or afternoon.